placenta accreta and the more severe procreta are serious complications occurring in about 1 in 2,500 pregnancies. Because the underlying pathology is usually linked to prior caesarean section, which has become more common, the incidence has increased tenfold in the past 50 years. I wish to explain how these problems develop, how to diagnose them by ultrasound, and what the implications are. In the earliest stages of pregnancy, the uterine lining undergoes a change called decidual reaction, which provides for accommodation and nourishment of the early embryo. As illustrated from this old di time diagram from Gray's Anatomy, there is a component called the decidua basalis at the site of attachment of the gestational sac. I have added some arrows and blue dots to emphasize it. This prevents growth of fetal components of the early placenta into the uterine wall. The decidua basalis evolves into the basal plate of the placenta. This diagram illustrates on the left how the normal basal plate prevents invasion of the placental vascular tissue into the myometrium, which is the muscular wall of the uterus. The basal plate also allows for a plane of separation of the placenta from the uterus after delivery of the baby. On the right is the situation in placenta accreta when the basal plate is absent. You can see that in accreta the vascular structures in red arising from the fetal side of the placenta, called chorionic villi, extend into the myometrium invading and replacing it. The result is that the placenta cannot separate and there is considerable bleeding after delivery of the baby. When the placental invasion extends beyond the uterus, the even more serious condition of placenta percreta occurs, which often involves the bladder. The term placenta increta is sometimes used for myometrial invasion, but seems largely to have passed out of fashion, even though it is probably a more accurate description than accreta. On ultrasound examinations in accreta, it is commonly difficult to see any myometrium overlying the placenta. Prior uterine surgery, especially prior caesarean section, underlies most cases of placenta accreta. Post-surgical scarring can lead damaged areas of the endometrium, that is the uterine lining, which cannot undergo the changes needed to form the decidua basalis and subsequent basal plate of the placenta. When the placenta is implanted in this region during a subsequent pregnancy, there is thus a considerable risk for accreta. As illustrated in this diagram, the usual caesarean section is made transversely across the lower uterus. Thus the combination of prior C-section and placenta previa, where the placenta grows over the region of the cervix and the lower uterus, puts a pregnant woman at risk. This can also occur when the placenta is anterior and low-lying over the site of the C-section scar. While ultrasound examination for accreta is often directed at the midline region adjacent to the bladder, problems can occur anywhere along the transverse scar. No matter how good the surgical closure of the uterine incision, the uterus will be undergoing postpartum shrinkage during the healing process. I wonder if this contributes to deficiencies and irregularities of the scar formation. This slide summarizes the clinical concerns in placenta accreta. While it is overall relatively rare, it is quite common in specific circumstances. Note the 10% incidence with one prior C-section and 40 to 50% with more than one prior C-section when there is associated placenta previa. Treatment usually involves delivery of the baby by caesarean section, then hysterectomy without removal of the placenta, a caesarean hysterectomy. Placenta accreta is now the commonest reason for caesarean hysterectomy. There is commonly considerable blood loss, although I wonder if 3 to 5 litres is an overstatement for the average case of accreta. One case of percreta that I am aware of, 
which was not diagnosed before repeat C-section, resulted in massive life-threatening bleeding and multiple operations. Most cases of accreta can be diagnosed on the 20-week sonogram if the examiner has the possibility in mind and is familiar with what to look for when the placenta overlies the C-section scar. The region of interest needs to be optimally visualized. Appropriate filling of the bladder, equipment adjustments and probe manipulation may be required. In this diagram, normal myometrium is demonstrated between the placenta and the bladder wall. There is placenta previa with placenta extending over the cervix. When looking for accreta in high-risk situations, bear in mind that one of the easiest things to miss in diagnostic imaging is the absence of a normal structure, in this case the myometrium. With placenta accreta, myometrium is not visualized between the placenta and the bladder wall, as demonstrated in this diagram. The myometrial gap may also be demonstrated by a gap in uterine blood flow on color Doppler. As well as missing myometrium, the diagram shows placental holes, the fancy name for which is lacunae. These holes are a typical finding in accreta and tend to show turbulent blood flow with color Doppler imaging. They are probably due to placental blood supply occurring through fewer but larger maternal vessels to compensate for lack of normal myometrial blood flow overlying the placenta. Holes can sometimes be seen in a normal placenta but do not usually show turbulent flow in the normal case. Associated bladder wall irregularity is very suspicious for placenta percreta as is pronounced bulging of the placenta beyond the uterus. The accreta process can sometimes show irregular and incomplete involvement as illustrated here. Moving on to clinical ultrasound images, in this normal case there is a thick layer of relatively dark myometrium between the bright echogenic placenta and the bladder wall. This image was taken during a transient asymptomatic contraction of the myometrium which is a normal occurrence on a 20-week examination. An image of this region taken later in the examination when the contraction subsided shows thinner myometrium over the placenta but still clearly present. Note that the anterior uterine wall is difficult to assess, probably related to pressure from the ultrasound probe. This image is from a case seen at 29 weeks as follow-up for known placenta previa. Absence of myometrium in the region underlying the placenta and adjacent to the bladder is shown by the blue arrows. In a different image from the same case, one well-defined placental hole or lacuna is seen anteriorly and others that are less well-defined more posteriorly question of placenta accreta was raised, clinical history of prior C-section was obtained and the findings were then considered very suspicious. This was later confirmed at operation with caesarean hysterectomy required. On review of the 20-week examination in the same case the missing myometrium is more difficult to appreciate as the bladder wall is not well seen. The placental holes were not well developed on this earlier examination. The superior resolution of transvaginal ultrasound may be useful for assessment at this stage and some experts consider that this should be routine. On the corresponding transverse 20 week image of this case there is an impression of placental bulging on the patient's left side which is towards your right and indicated by the blue arrows. There is a suggestion of a placental hole within this bulging. It is important to bear in mind that the scar extends across the width of the anterior lower uterus. In another case, you can see an anterior low-lying or marginal placenta at 20 weeks that almost reaches the cervix, which is indicated by the callipers. <coughs> 
No normal myometrium is seen between the placenta and bladder wall anteriorly, shown by long thin arrows. More posteriorly, there is a large fluid type space between part of the placenta and the bladder as indicated by the thick arrow. This is probably vascular, but there are no color Doppler images for this case. The bladder wall appears mildly irregular. On another image from the same case, the bladder wall is definitely irregular. Placenta percreta involving the bladder was confirmed at operation. The patient had symptoms of bladder irritation during pregnancy without urinary tract infection. Multiple small holes are seen in an anterior portion of the placenta in the same case, indicated by the arrows. This shows more placental holes. Does the fetus appear slightly alarmed? An area of pronounced placental protrusion is outlined by the blue arrows on your right. The caliper measurement is for a fetal kidney. This was a proven case of placenta percreta. More subtle and irregular invasion of the myometrium is seen adjacent to the placental protrusion on an adjacent image as indicated by the arrows. On this transverse image large tubular fluid structures are seen which represent enlarged maternal vessels. The following case is unusual in that the prior transverse c-section had required a vertical extension for a difficult fetal extraction. The baby was in a transverse lie. This vertical uterine incision is illustrated in red. The placenta accreta that occurred in the subsequent pregnancy was related to the vertical component of the scar and was therefore anterior under the lower abdominal wall rather than the usual situation of being adjacent to the bladder. As noted before, the anterior uterine wall can be more difficult to visualize over the placenta, normally perhaps due to effects of probe pressure. When this patient presented at 35 weeks with abdominal pain, however, I paid particular attention to the anterior lower uterus using a higher resolution probe and also power Doppler for vascular evaluation. While power Doppler gives flow images only in red, it is relatively more sensitive than standard color Doppler and makes complex vessels easier to follow. In this transverse image across the upper uterus there is visible myometrium with blood flow seen to be overlying the placenta. The following sequence of images was obtained across the lower abdomen. On the right side blood flow can be seen in the wall of the uterus indicated by the thick arrow. Underneath this is a bright echogenic layer as demonstrated by the two thin arrows representing the basal plate of the placenta which can show this appearance in later pregnancy as part of placental maturity changes. Under this layer some flow can be seen in the placenta. When the probe is moved towards the midline, the myometrium and echogenic basal plate essentially disappear and the placenta seems to extend to the surface of the uterine contour. Here a prominent vessel can be seen on the maternal surface of the placenta as indicated by the thick arrow. It extends into the placental substance with no visible intervening myometrium. The vessel terminates in a small placental vascular hole as indicated by the long thin arrows. Now moving the probe to the left, the basal plate and the uterine wall reappear overlying the placenta. Arrows for myometrial blood flow and the basal plate of the placenta correspond to those used for the right lower abdomen with additional modified arrows for placental holes. Because of the lack of visible myometrium 
in the images of the central lower abdomen, I thought this situation represented a placenta percreta, but at repeat caesarean section it was a localized accreta. Since it did not extend into the lowermost segment of the uterus, a subtotal hysterectomy was performed. The diagnosis of placenta accreta or percreta has a large impact on planned surgical delivery. It is very desirable to do the procedure on an elective basis so that all personnel and equipment will be available in an organized fashion, thus delivery will likely be earlier than usual for a repeat C-section. The abdominal incision may need to be vertical and more extensive than usual. To avoid the placenta, the uterine incision may well be different from usual as well. Preoperative placement of a balloon tip catheter in the major artery supplying the uterus on each side may be helpful. The balloons are kept deflated until after delivery of the baby, at which time they are inflated and block blood flow. This reduces blood loss and makes the operative field cleaner. If the uterus has to be left in, bleeding can then be controlled with embolization through the catheters and the placental tissue will ultimately regress. This is a list of what I think the ultrasound examiner needs to do as a routine to avoid missing the diagnosis. The placenta should routinely be visualized top to bottom and side to side. When there is an anterior low-lying placenta, Use this as an opportunity to familiarize yourself with the normal appearance of the myometrium under this circumstance. The combination of prior C-section and placenta overlying the scar puts the patient at a risk of 10% or more for accreta. In such situations, careful search for missing myometrium and placental holes is essential. Optimization of bladder filling and technical factors may be needed. My reading of articles and experience with three cases do not make for expertise, but I feel that these guidelines represent what should be a standard of care for examiners. <laughs>